Well, hello and welcome to this Tuesday tutorial here on Facebook. My name is Lenny Nelson. Don Balance is in training this week. If you've never been to a New Tech University, I suggest you check it out. The information is on our website at newtech.com. And uh, today I'm going to be showing you a feature that is in TriCaster Advanced Edition that really gives you a lot of creative power. Namely, they are called borders. And what borders do is allow you to put a frame or an edge or a drop shadow on a, a layer in your uh, TriCaster. So if we go to the interface here, here's what I've got here. I've got a simple uh, still image here as the background, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to graphics two and, or, or down tier two, downstream key number one. And in that, I've got the snakes picture. So if I bring that up on top, it's going to cover everything. But if I change the size of it, for example, here, and well, let's make it about 60%. Okay, all right, so now it's sitting on top of it here. What we're gonna do is simply hit the edges tab up here. And with edges, what you can do is you can crop things in a little bit, but what I'm gonna do is not gonna use edges. I'm gonna use the border tool here. We have many different borders in here. So if you look, there's a separate section for borders in your media browser. And there's many different colors and styles. Uh, basically, you can do a lot of neat things there, but I'm gonna go with the green and I'm gonna pick a rectangular, uh, rectangular beveled shadow, whatever that means, but it's, it looks good. Okay, so as you can see, that added a border to give it some separation from the background. So that was kind of neat, and that's kind of a simple use for it. But for me, one of my favorite things to do with borders is you can really uh, build the graphics to be unique to your production. So I'm gonna take this off, and I'm gonna show you a couple of things. So, over the years, TriCasters have given you the ability to uh, do double box effects like this one. Now that's nice, but it is part of a virtual set. So there's not a lot of, uh, I can't change it dynamically. Those, those boxes are locked in that position. The borders are set to uh, whatever the virtual set had in it. Uh, and if you also look at this one, this one gives us a, a quad split effect, but I can't move them around. I can't change the borders or anything like that. But with TriCaster Advanced Edition in the new comping window, you can do a lot of unique things. So for example, I've got this uh, buffer here. It's just a motion background that loops into infinity. It's kind of unique like that. But if I go to my comp window, for example, and I'm gonna bring up uh, this guy, okay? He's uh, in uh, upstream key number two on ME number three. So what we're gonna do is we're going to simply give him a border to separate him a little bit. So I click this tab up here, go to edges, go to borders, and I turned it on. And as you can see right now, he's got this little uh, drop shadow border going on right now. Now that's uh, interesting, but what we can really do is we give you the ability to make your own borders. Now, if you go into uh, your TriCaster and you browse on the uh, C drive here, you're going to go to TriCaster effects borders and at the bottom there's this file called build your own border now what that is is a photoshop file so i'm gonna show you a little bit about that i've moved this file over to my laptop over here that has photoshop on it okay and as you can see in this photoshop file there's a, a uh, template here that you can use to build your own borders here's two things you need to know about it first of all if you look at the image size oops, sorry I meant image size. If you look at the image size, you'll see that it is not 1920 by 1080. It is 2304 by 1296. What that does is that gives you 10% extra around the original frame size to build graphics that will appear outside of your image raster of, at, at HD 1920 by 1080. The other thing to know is there are three layers in this file. The first thing you need to know is there's below video layer, okay? What below video layer is, is graphics that will appear below what your video layer is. The next layer is the video layer mask. And what that does is basically cuts it out to show video through that area. Now, because we're making a mask, there's no reason this has to be square, rectangle, or anything. It could be an abnormal shape. It could be round. It could be whatever you want it to be. Now, we also have above video layer, and what, on this example, what it's doing is putting a frame, but you could put anything you wanted to on top of it, okay? 
So those are the three layers that need to be in your Photoshop file. And you also have to make sure that it is that size 2304 by 1296, giving you that extra 10% around the edges. So I'm going to show you a little border I built here uh, to give you some ideas of, of something you can do. So for example, I made this little extra frame around it with rounded edges and a little bit of a gradient on it. And what this gradient does is it allows it to be transparent because, you know, it's just following a mask, uh, uh, mask cause it's, cause we're making a PNG, a PSD file that has transparency in it. Now, another thing you need to know is if you look down here at your layers, all of your layers when you're making borders have to be rasterized. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these background layers, right? And we're going to turn them into a smart object and then we're just going to rasterize it. So rasterize layer. And we got to remember to change it to call it the right name below video layer. All right. So now that we've got that, <coughs> that's the image that will appear below our video layer. Next we have our video layer mask. And Everybody likes rounded rectangles. We look at them all day as our phones. So I made a little rounded rectangle deal here. And all we're going to do is rasterize that layer. So now it is uh, actual pixels and not a, sh a vector shape. And then I've got above video layer. I've got nothing on this one, but uh, I'll show you a little trick with that in just a second. So I save this out as a PSD file with these three layers. Then I come back over to my TriCaster. All right. So what you're going to do then is we'll go back to our gentleman here and we're going to modify his border to our new rounded border that I just made. So I just called it new rounded border when I was working on it, getting this show ready for you. So I'm going to click that. Now, as you can see, he's got that rounded border. He's got the rounded edges like I showed you and that little bit of a gradient on the extra fill there. Now, what makes these better than uh, just adding your own graphics onto things is that video can be dynamic. You can change to the background and it'll see through it. Um, it gives you a lot of neat uh, opportunities there. Now the other thing you can do is you can use the comp engine to do some really neat stuff. So right now I'm going to show you because we didn't just apply this to one layer. We applied it to all four keyers. And so now that same border is on all four. And because it's tied to the, the key layer, I don't have to worry about doing any dynamic uh, animations because they're all together. So if I want to zoom to this guy, I can zoom to this guy and his border stays attached to him. So we can go to this one and we can go to the other guy down here and we can go to this guy up here. And we're just using the comp engine here to run around these scenes and using the borders. By using the borders, we didn't have to use any other MEs. We didn't have to use any other layers. We didn't have to use anything outside of just that one little tool inside of each key. So I'm going to show you another little trick here because it's interesting to put a border around everybody. But one thing about when you're zooming around here, if you've got uh, to put location identifiers or a lower third or something like that on there, it's going to be hard to keep all that mapped in there unless you use other MEs. But I'm going to show you a little trick. If because you've got that above the video layer, uh, capability inside of the border file. What if instead of doing just the border on it like this here, what if we just put all of that information inside of the border? So for example, if I go to ME4 here and we zoom in on this guy, now we know that he's the angry man from Toledo, Ohio. And he's angry because he bought a car from the used car salesman in Cincinnati, Ohio. And he got angry and he went to his family lawyer who lives in Beaver Dam, Ohio, and the car salesman decided to hire a hotshot attorney from Columbus, Ohio, because, you know, the Ohio State Buc Buc Buckeyes are all hotshots. But just by using borders, we were able to apply all of these graphics. We didn't have to use any other Emmys, any other keyers. It's all built right into every single keyer right there on the TriCaster. So that's how you use borders in TriCaster Advanced Edition. So I hope this little tutorial on borders has been helpful for you. It's really a powerful feature that you should really try out and see what you can do with. If uh, you got any other ideas for future tutorials you'd like to see on a Facebook Live uh, Tuesday tutorial, go ahead and put it in the comments below. Uh, my name is Lenny Nelson. From everybody here at New Tech, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.